hell, here we go. Another movie making these nerds think they can go out and fight crime in costume. Hey, man, that, that's actually kind of good. It, it cuts down on the nerds. <laughs> <laughs> it thins the herd. Yeah. The nerd herd. <laughs> you are a self-hating nerd. Dude. I know. I know. I was about hey, to say, hey, what is it? You're, you're, you're Uncle Tom of a nerd. Right? No, 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 that's bullshit. I'm, Uncle I'm, nerd. I'm, 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 I'm like, wait a minute. No, I was going to say I'm like the brony that, that hates the cloppers, but I no, never mind. Yeah. I, I don't like that at all. But even worse. Scratch that. And you know what, man? It don't matter because in real life, when these people go out and fight crime in costumes, you know what they really end up doing? They end up feeding homeless people. Yeah, they get bored. They just end up yeah. feeding homeless people. I thought you, I thought you were going to say they feed themselves. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Got some extra baggage left over. And even then, that don't ever work out too good for them because you always get that one homeless person like, the oh, fuck, get the fuck off me, man. I think you're crazy looking ass off me. It's a general good rule of thumb. Unless you actually have superpowers that make you godlike, don't try to be a superhero. No. <laughs> I don't care how many push-ups you can do. Yeah. I don't care how much of a ninja you think you are. You're going to die. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, man. Once that Phoenix Jones documentary comes out, oh, you're going to see a whole flood of them. You just wait. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Phoenix Jones, they're still trying to put out that documentary. I'm going to be old man before well, that shit's I'm, I'm sure well, it'll, it'll happen posthumously. Uh, yeah. yeah. After you get stabbed in the alleyway. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for that, that epic ending. <laughs> yeah. I think Phoenix Jones kicked one guy in the face. Yeah. And now thinks he's Batman. <laughs> he, he actually, he, he maced a bunch of dancers. The, the, like, they would like dance in the street. He thought it was a real riot. He, he maced all these people. Was oh, that the crime now? <laughs> well, it wasn't, but it was. Yeah, the crime was what he committed. Yeah, and, they, and they they made him unmask on TV. You are un <laughs> That's right. you are unstable if you put on a costume and you go out and you beat people up you think yeah, are criminals. Yeah, yeah. There's no other way. I love superheroes, Me but too. I'm not a <laughs> blithering idiot. Right. <laughs> yeah. I just love that they made Phoenix Jones take off his mask, and you know what? Nobody still gave a shit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, oh. Did you? Oh, you're a crazy black guy. Was, all right. you know, it's like you were all disappointed. I thought it was going to be Bill Gates. I know. <laughs> and you know <laughs> <laughs> right. It was funny because nobody w gave a shit about him. They didn't wonder about him being a superhero. They were saying, damn, you got that hot top fade under that mask. <laughs> 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 you know that shit? That, oh, yeah. that kid in yeah. play hair? Yeah, that was his real superpower to keep haircuts from the 90s alive. And yeah. yeah, and he was able to fit that much hair under a hood. That was his power right there. I mean, when he took the mask off, he had to push a button and a bunch of mist sprayed out. <laughs> <laughs> Afro sheen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that device that Darth Vader used. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, man, it's, it's it, yeah, it's 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 for the movies. It's made for the movies, and even in Kick Ass too, I don't think that they were able to pass off convincingly that people can go out and fight crime and mask. I mean, it's it kind of went against everything that they were trying to parody. Well, it's, yeah, it's weird because like on the surface, it seems like it's a meta film, or like much like the first one about like what would happen if real life people decided to fight crime. But ultimately, it's even more comic booky than the comic book movies it's supposed to be sad or yes mm -hmm. yeah well, i think so well i i don't know with the first one like i know you guys all like the first one i didn't because i was like all right it starts out faithful to the comic like showing like hey this is what it would be like if real people went out to fight crime and then later it just kind of turned into a parody of spider-man i was like eh. well the, the thing with the first one is that I, I thought that really you know the thing that really worked the thing that really sold that movie at least for me was the relationship between chloe morton and nicholas cage those two characters of hit of hit girl and big daddy, uh, big daddy. Yeah, yeah i thought they, they were the shining thing about, about that movie unlike the lead uh, who's <laughs> kick-ass where i'm like wow i can't remember uh i'm aaron to, taylor, aaron, taylor aaron, johnson aaron johnson, aaron johnson like it, it made me go back and look at that film and just realize how pointless that character is in a way especially watching this one where Aaron Johnson's the least interesting guy at all in this film, especially just having absolutely no charisma or screen presence whatsoever. Well, you know what? It's funny that you should mention that because in this second movie, he realizes that this sounds like a perfect time to tell you about the plot. Yeah. <laughs> no, he he kind of realizes that as kick ass, he got a little notoriety in the first movie, but then he starts getting his ass beat a little bit more. And he's like, shit, you know what? I really don't want to give up being kick ass, but I got to learn how to kick ass. Right. So he goes to the person that really does know how to fight crime and do it effectively. He goes to Hit Girl, played by Chloe Grace Moretz, and he, he's saying, look, I want to get back into the action, but I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. You know, you, you do. Teach me how to be a superhero. In fact... We can be a team. We can be like Batman and Robin. I want to team up like Batman and Robin. Nobody wants to be Robin. What's wrong with Robin? Wouldn't you like Big Daddy's Robin? Okay, Robin wishes he was me. What I'm trying to say is we should be partners. You and me like the dynamic duo. 
I'm in the NFL, Dave. And you play Pee Wee. So, train me. I want to walk the walk, and you're the closest thing I know to a real superhero. Aren't you tired of being on your own? Don't you want to know someone's there for you? Someone who's got your back? They've already inspired a group of people. They've already it's got gone a, viral. Yeah, it's gone viral. They already got a, a a group of ordinary citizens who get get in costumes. They do patrol. They're not. They're still just like I said, feeding homeless people. They're still not doing a whole lot of stuff out there. They're just playing games. But when we have what was the guy's name from the last one? Uh, what's that actor's name? Christopher Mintz Plaza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. McLovin. McLovin. I can. I was trying to avoid calling him that. <laughs> Man, that's what everybody calls him. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm gonna keep saying McLovin. You're right. <laughs> he, he he is McLovin the way what's his name is Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> See how I call him? What's his name? Because he ain't got a name no more. Yeah. yeah. Even I, IMDb was. gave up and he, just called him McLovin. <laughs> McLovin. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got McLovin out there who's uh, who who was the red mist in the last movie. We we saw how things happen. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but things turned out for him not so great and it was all because of kick-ass and he says you know what like a true villain i vow to get revenge on kick-ass and therefore he becomes a super villain like the world's first costume super villain the motherfucker <laughs> and it's only then when he goes out and starts really doing bad things i mean he's actually killing people and destroying stuff and causing mayhem that these heroes who are playing games they got to be real heroes now. They got to come together and try to stop them. I'll tell you what I like about this movie better than I like the first one. I think this movie has a lot of heart. <laughs> I think it's, yeah. I, th I actually think it's more emotional. It's not just relishing in violence this time. It's just that the movie has so many different tones that it's trying to fit together. It's a teen comedy. It's a teen sex comedy. It's a kids after school special at one point. It's, it's a trauma <laughs> film at one point. It's a trauma yeah. film, yeah. It's a violent action movie. It goes between trying to be really dark to trying to be lighthearted and goofy. And while some parts of that I can appreciate, there's other parts that I just don't think worked well, worked that well, well together. It's, it's because this is an adaptation of not just Kick-Ass 2, but also the Hit Girl uh, miniseries. Because all that all that stuff where we see when it flashes to Mindy and the trouble she's having at school, that's all from a like a separate Hit Girl series that they did. And I went back and even reread those this morning, and like it took like a like an hour and twenty minutes to to reread you know yeah. the whole series. But it's very faithful. I, I I was like, wow, they really are including almost everything and not even straying from the book that much. Probably a lot of problem if you you know problems you have with it were were there on the page. I don't know what else they could have done, but. You are right in that the tone that it t it tries to take, and I can see like trying to go like, all right, we don't want it to be just one thing all the way through, but in the end, it does feel like it's too many things at once. Yeah, yeah it wants to be way too much to too many people. This type of story, what they're trying to do, this like whereas Kickass was much more simple, what it was going after. Here, they want all these different art characters to have all these different arcs. There's so many characters yeah. in this fucking film. There's so many. And we know just tiny bits about most of them. That like there are points that like you said, Corey, that you thought that the the, the violence was just for violence sake like in the first one. I'm like, I found the violence much uglier in this film than I did really? in the first one. Mm. Because in the first one it was somebody learning the hard way that, hey man, this whole violence gig, it kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 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 tough and you're gonna get hurt really bad. And here we get to see go through that again, pretty much. Except it's just much more brutal, I thought, in the delivery of it in a lot of ways, and not in a fun way. I'm actually getting bored of violence watching this movie <laughs> and just kind of getting turned off by the whole experience there there it felt like they were more salivating in it I thought it was it, more violent than the first one yeah i did yeah it, most definitely i think it seemed more, more gory. really I, I, yeah. I really didn't i didn't get i didn't get that sense at all I, I think that's because a lot of the action and stuff seemed very kind of cliche what you see from typical superhero movies i mean a lot of these fight scenes i was like yeah these look like fight scenes like from Watchmen, just how they're choreographed yeah. to where there weren't anything all that special and seeing somebody on the top of a moving vehicle once again you know i was like oh okay i thought Wal wolverine did it all right Wolverine just, did it better yeah but you know this one was like all right all right you know you it, it does kind of throw the whole reality thing out the window yeah at that point but uh, my biggest problem was not only did it feel just clunky it seemed like they're really trying to get that same feel that they that they did in the first one where the original director um Matthew was, Vaughn. Matt, Matt Vaughn seemed to juggle all those things the right way at least for me this one it really seemed like they were still trying to keep that tone but it just wasn't it wasn't melding well we got so many different stories going on one is the the team the the, the Justice League team of these superheroes the other is hit girl trying to realize like who are they are they actually hit girl or are they this this little innocent 15 year old you know girl? what i like this story with hit girl though well that, 
you know, I was about to say that was the only story that had any kind of meat and soul to it. It agree, did, as it opposed did, it to did. everything else. That was that was the story I wish they would have stuck yeah, with. Even when inevitably at the point there's got to be a you know a tragic death of a character, mm-hmm. I felt nothing. Nothing oh, yeah. at all, and the film wanted you to feel something, and there was nothing to feel. You know, it's, like, it's these it's, aren't real; don't feel real at all. Whereas her story, as dumb as it is at times, and it's really dumb at points and mishandled, it's a hundred times more interesting than all the rest of the shit going on. I, I know that 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 thing with the tragic death you're talking about. Um, uh, I don't know. I I didn't think I was gonna feel anything because I'd already read it in the comic. And so I knew what was coming mm-hmm. and I was like, well, good. I won't be having that weird feeling. And yet when it happened, I kind of did. A hit girl. I, I really like her being torn. She's her father's dead. Her new dad is black. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Boris I Chestnut, know. you know. So many problems to deal with. I know. I mean, you know, she ain't, she's, she's probably catching a flag for that. <laughs> but, yeah. but, uh, and, and she's just trying to fit in at school. And there's this whole thing of, I only know one thing, all right? My father <laughs> fucked my mind up, okay? And now you're trying to make me go to slumber parties and trying to make me hang out with the biggest bitches at school. And I, I really like that part of the story. Mm-hmm. I really love Jim Carrey in the movie. Uh, and I wish that I'd seen more of him. What was Jim Carrey's character in the movie? America Man or something? Like <laughs> General, uh, uh, General Stars and Stripes? Something yeah, like Stars, well, it was Colonel Stars and Stripes. He was another kind of just like standout i was like when the movie lost nicholas cage and they brought in jim carrey it's almost like he filled in that void right right but the sad thing is that yeah you don't get enough of him and they even when he is like you know a bigger part of the film they don't give him enough to do anyway i mean they've got an interesting amount of latex makeup on him where he looks just different enough anyway from normal jim carrey yeah but what impressed me about the part is the way carrey just buried all his regular tics. he really did he's just like <laughs> they're, they're not him. there yeah you forget that it's him completely which usually even if you see him play a very different type of role those ticks always rise to the surface here he he really is a completely different character and, and it's a shame that he's he was talking so much shit about this film considering he was the probably one of the best <laughs> yeah, things yeah, yeah i was <laughs> i was wondering about that too i think he pulled an eddie murphy where you put enough shit on his face he just <laughs> hides underneath that it doesn't feel the need to be Jim Carrey. If we didn't know Jim Carrey was in the movie. People would be looking at it and saying, that guy looks familiar. He looks, <laughs> he, he looks like some guy I know. And people wouldn't even be thinking an actor. They'd be like, man, that's a, that looks like a friend of mine. Right? It, 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 it's amazing when you throw so much shit on somebody's face and you actually see their real talent for once. You know, come yeah. through. I like Jim Carrey. You know, speaking know. of real talent, though, I have to admit, McLovin as the motherfucker, <laughs> every time he was on screen, I wanted more and more. But they were just giving me little snippets throughout the whole movie. And I was like, man, you that's a, something else. You're kind of fumbling the ball with just his origins, his his re-origins, I, I guess. I, I don't know about that man i I was really digging it whenever he like (laughs) here's the thing and i don't think the problem is with him there were moments when the movie just thought it was being more clever than it really was and they really tried to emphasize that too when mclovin comes in damn i'm sorry for calling him mclovin so much (laughs) when he when he would come in there's there's that one scene when he decides to become the villain he says i will call myself he looks at the camera the motherfucker and we just waiting like (laughs) Okay, what you want, man? <laughs> man want, I mean, want some applause or something? Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's like that in the book, mm-hmm. and and when I read that, even in the comic, I felt that same kind of thud. Like, mm-hmm. for real, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, this, the the writer who write who writes this, Mark Mark Millar, he's really good at setting things up and had given a like a dangerous edge and gives you like like that Tarantino f- feeling. Like, man, you took me out of my comfort zone. But when he gets to the third issue of any book. It starts to go like, okay, now he's going for just nothing but shock value. Yeah. It's just not that well written of a character, and he's the one who gets the most monologues. I mean, right. if anybody has the most lines in this movie, it's probably him. He just goes on and on and on with some truly terribly written dialogue of and plot elements. And I was like, there are points I'm just like, please move on. This is like watching somebody who's really talented in the worst movie of their life and think it's the greatest, and you're just embarrassed for them. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't feel to that degree. Matter of yeah. fact, I mean, I, just you talking now, I remember something I really like that's an uh, element in this as far as plot elements where he's like, yeah, I, I want you to get some guys to train me so I can fight. And <laughs> yeah. ass kid, he's like, you know what? I'm rich. I'm yeah. just paying some people to fight for me. <laughs> no, and right, and right, there, right there, that to me at least was the core of that character. He's thinking he's <laughs> turned into this big dog yet he's still the little <laughs> idiot and and i was just relishing every moment he was on screen I only found doing it funny that. when he was playing off of john leguizamo man i, I thought they were a great team together. yeah, they yeah. Were. he's another guy who's not in this film for long enough or enough <laughs> yeah. 
enough of him it, because his bits are funny when they're bounced off John Leguizamo playing kind of the straight guy yeah. versus him. But when he, there's no straight guy, it's just not funny. It's irritating. It's funny because it sounds like like everything we're saying, like a big problem with this movie is like there's a lot of great little pieces or, or uh, actors you like and none of them are on long enough. It's funny. Like, like, the like movie, I really like Clark yeah. Duke, but – He's he's not he doesn't yeah, get a big role. Barely. The movie seems to come out and say, "Hey, you like this person? Too bad." Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the movie's a super villain. Yeah, but, but do you know, out of all the discussion that we're having right now, the one person who we're not talking about or bringing up at all is the guy who's playing kick ass. I've never liked that actor, and, and, and that's the thing. I mean, I don't know if it's just him or they didn't give him enough to do because his storyline honestly felt like a retread of the first movie you're supposed to believe you can tell earlier regardless of shirt on or not that this guy has buffed out like a oh mother. of course oh, they try yeah. to act like he's just some you know <laughs> <laughs> charles atlas nerds <laughs> well, well, shit, he's eight workout. feet tall yeah. yeah and looks like a 30 year old going to high school and then <laughs> later on he's doing like one-handed pull-ups <laughs> i and know shit, and you're like dude what the fuck it's like they <laughs> when they when he's in that kick-ass costume he looks like gumby on steroids yeah, <laughs> yeah, i'm like god right. damn it's like i thought he was supposed to be a weakling you know and I will say this, though. You say he looks like he's 30 years old. I really did buy that he was a high school student. In fact, when I saw him, one of the things I can credit this guy for is that I've seen him in movies where he's played an adult. I saw him in this, and I said, ah, shit, he looks like he's back in high school to me. But you know, he has uh, he has the same kind of superpower as Phoenix Jones, getting all that fro all that hair, hair, all that fro hair. <laughs> and and that fro hair up and that fro hair. <laughs> <laughs> that, that mask is. I was like, how does he do that? How come there's not big clumps of hair like just protruding out of the out I know, of that when every time and... he pulls off that mask, there's that... a quick cut just so he can come back and his hair is all perfect. Because <laughs> you know he would be the worst hat head ever. Right there. You know, that's the only thing that's kept Leon off the streets is that he can't put a mask on that afro here. Yeah. If he could, he'd be out there fighting crime. It keeps popping off every time he runs. <laughs> Actually, I got to say, out of everybody in this room, it's you, co-host, I'm worried about. What? It's you that I feel like you would be the one to go out and try to really do this shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I would do my best to be like the motherfucker, but there's a good say, chance I would die. I was yeah. going to say, he'd be like the motherfucker. He would be like the, <laughs> the super villain. Come on, bitch. I am. Don't tell me your problems, man. <laughs> he's giving everyone, like, racist, like, super villain names. <laughs> he's, he's living in the wrong city. He ain't like, we got a high crime rate. Like shit on the floor. You'd ring doorbells and run. That's what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Flaming bags of poop. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> you know, I, this director here, this Wadlow guy, Jeff Wadlow. I thought oh, Vaughn directed Oh, did he oh, no, produce no. it? No, yeah, Matthew Vaughn produced it. Okay. Jeff okay. Wadlow. Yeah, co-host uh, Jeff Wadlow made one of your favorite movies, man. Oh, really? Yeah, he did. Which one? You remember that movie. Don't act like you don't know. Um, oh, jeez. Never back down. It's just what? Different. Never back down. Never back down. You see, I told you. See how excited it is. You Are love you serious? it. serious? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, I, no, I remember that. You had to go see that movie by yourself one I day. I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. Don't, well, don't bring back those those horrible origins <laughs> of, hey, of my super villainy. <laughs> your, your buddy's back. <laughs> and you should know. Now, you told me how the the, the direction that movie was just kind of flat. It felt oh, like it, one it really of those, was. It felt like one of those, because the movie is a fighting film, and you said mm -hmm. it. This doesn't even feel like a fighting film from the 90s. This feels mm -hmm. like a fighting film from the 80s. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this film felt like you went back, looked at Kick Ass to get that same aesthetic, same look of it. So it really does kind of feel like the guy didn't bring any of his own vision to this, I thought. It's yeah. flat direction, man. That's yeah. what I felt mm -hmm. like. I will say, though, I did like that, that car chase where Hit Girl's on top of the car and she's fighting. I did like that. I found that pretty cool. I, I would have liked it had it not looked so fake. Yeah. yeah. And I understand, look, we know it's not real. It's stunts. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain level. It's like... Guys, you, you got to try a little bit. You know, there's an interesting thing about that. The, the look of it looked way better in the commercials. It just looks like the lighting is flat. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. looks like very mm -hmm. basic lighting. There's real, no, there's no real atmosphere in this. There's mm -hmm. no real mood to it. It's just, it just. That's why I mean by flat. I guess it mm -hmm. just felt like they set three lights up and just lit that shit, and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, man. I, I know you guys liked the the, the first Kick Ass a lot. Well, not and, Leon, but I, I probably liked it. I liked it less than you guys, but more than Leon. I'm kind of in the middle here. It's just things I like about this movie more than I like in the first one. But it's just all over the place. It doesn't come together too well for me. In, in the ending of this, I thought, man, that's, that is just really goofy right there. This is some <laughs> West Side Story shit going on here. Yeah, oddly for me, I, I was pretty bored to this whole film until the last, like, the big battle, which is so back to kind of the feel of the original. I was like, okay, 
this is not over confusing it it's just straight ahead it's some fun action sequence stuff mm -hmm. i like the whole we've got that feeling of the underdog striking back again thing that i like i enjoyed it for what it was but just it was gonna too, contradict but it was too little too late <laughs> <laughs> no i'm messing with you yeah. <laughs> everything <laughs> i like you don't like i think we know who the real super villain in this movie is. <laughs> no i get it I, I think it's one of those movies where we all can sit up here and cherry pick things that yeah. oh like easily it. everybody's gonna have something mm -hmm. different and whatnot yeah. just because this movie is that disjointed Give it a fun rental. A fun rental. A fun rental. We have to add a new category. Yeah. Can I do a, a fun summer no. bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> is don't, there such a thing? Don't no. go ahead. It will be. <laughs> you know what, Leon? You'll be the one to do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Corey, I feel like I, I've been waiting for you to come out with your rating because I feel like everything you're saying, I'm right there with you. And I even told you, sorry. I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. There's things in it I I like. There's things I I can clearly see are wrong. I like it. I have a much better feeling coming out of it with this one than I did with the first one. And it's damn faithful to the, to the, the book, which, you know, it's almost like, well, you can't fault something for staying true to its source material, uh, to a point. I don't feel like, Oh, I want to see this again, but I found things to enjoy about it while I watched it. And it, but it is a goddamn mess. I don't know about a fun <laughs> rental, but I will say a high rental. Okay. That's the same thing. <laughs> Is it? Then why didn't you just say that? Yeah. Because it's more cord. fun to say fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. Fuck with you this one. <laughs> okay. You know, the thing is like, yeah, there's parts of this throughout that you're like, oh, that was fun. Carrie's character being a good example for me was like really enjoying what they were doing with them. And then they just kind of ruined it. It's like, really? That's where you want to go with this? But the worst thing for me overall, I thought, was the humor. I just didn't think this movie was funny. In fact, I thought it was trying so hard to make just puerile and poop humor the biggest part of its jokes that I just I just lost interest completely by Come the way. Come on, man. Yeah. The, <laughs> Even I had to laugh at these poop jokes. <laughs> I'm gonna give this a low rental. Man, uh, all these rentals. <laughs> I know you guys. All kinda, these choices. You guys rentals. really screwed me up here. <laughs> what what flavor honestly, of rental will you uh, pick? <laughs> I'll, I'll say I, I will. I'm really shocked by it because I. I mean, it's, starting off, I, th I was like, "Wow, Corey loves this more than I do." Yet hearing your rating, I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, that's not what I was going to give it at all. I, I, I'm actually going to give it a matinee uh, because as much as you know, they fumble the ball from time to time. There really are some great moments in this movie, um, and collectively, you know, when you're watching it, it really doesn't hit you till after until you, till you're walking out, you know, till you're just kind of piecing it together in your head. But uh, the fact is that when I'm in a theater and it's and it's actually hitting its notes like it should at times, I was I was really kind of digging it, especially the uh, hit girl uh slash mean girls movie yeah. that with that yeah. kind of in there that that right there i was like there's your movie right there that should have been the focus that would have been way more original than what we kind of saw here but uh yeah i'm gonna give it a matinee I, I still had a good time did he not sound like bullshit when he was talking about it earlier he did no 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 like no. no no yeah I, you you, you I, I man you guys in here right uh, i can uh, clearly hear that, that he liked the movie you ain't gotta be yeah. nice well, fact, we were all, I, I i i feel like thank I'm, you leon like, like, I'm, <laughs> like honestly i was on that teetering on that on that that low rental high matinee mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm not sure where to go with it i'm mad about these kids now they get to say ass when i never got to say when i was a kid <laughs> I mean, you could act. You, you have an excuse now to go and say ass to your mother when you oh, want to go see something. I never had that opportunity. If I if kick ass, it come out and Leon, I think you there with me. Oh yeah. If it had come out and our time, we'd be like, my mama, hey mama, hey mama, can I go see kick ass? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take that as a yip. <laughs> it's it's hilarious you said because there is a there is a picture going around of I I, I think uh, kick ass is playing some theater around the Bible Belt or something like that where they actually covered up the poster <laughs> piece of paper over the ass part. It just says hey, kick two. Like, you know what they, I can't wait for Geek 2 to you come know what they do? They, they put a donkey on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> With a mask. That would have been way better. 